Hello everyone, this is uh, DB0 and uh, with me I have once again Mr. Skinny or otherwise known as ANR Casts. Hello there. Hello, thanks again for having me. Excellent, nice to have you. Um, we're going to see the second match between uh, Andrew Rogue and Inermis and this time we're going to uh, see Inermis as the uh, criminal and the... Uh, uh, sorry, Inermis as the Wayland and Andrew Rogue as the criminal. Inermis had a easy, uh, a smashing victory in the last uh, game with a 7-0. So at the moment he only needs one point to win the matchup. Uh, unfortunately... Yeah, it was quite a, quite a brutal game. I guess it was, uh, uh, what was it, 15 minutes maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so now um, uh, Inermis is only playing for the, just needs the one point. Yep. He only needs the one point and that's really easy to do with the Wayland deck. As soon as you draw your, um, as long as you draw your thingy, your uh, uh, is it hostile? The hostile, hostile takeover, takeover, yeah. Right. As soon as you draw your hostile takeover, you won the matchup. So I'm surprised that Inemis did Mulligan for a hostile takeover, but he's probably thinking okay, better not to uh, uh, risk too much. And it's very likely that uh, we're going to see Inemis protect R and D as much as possible to the. Uh, detriment of everything else, because that's really w all he needs to do. All he needs to do is just uh, top deck until he finds that... Uh, uh, until he finds his uh, hostile takeover. So have you seen um, games where it has been a 7-0 as the first, the corp just uh, essentially draws cards every uh, click? <laughs> no. Until, uh, they s I w in this case, I wouldn't even do it because if you draw the hostile takeover, you cannot score it. You want to draw it at the start of your turn. Mm -hmm. So what we're probably going to see here is Enigma in R&D and the uh, Ice Wall in HQ, mainly because Enigma is, Enigma is more difficult to break uh, overall if you get a relevant breaker. Alternative, he can go like Ice Ice and the Posted Bounty, which is also a great idea. He could go like Ice Ice in a remote server and then play the Posted Bounty behind it. And then the, the runner is screwed. It's very unlikely he'll get able to get in and he can definitely score that Posted Bounty. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> You'll, you'll be able to point that one out at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would be very... You're right. There's, there's pretty much no way for him to do it the first turn, I can't imagine. Fortunately for the runner, he has both breakers that he needs. <laughs> right. So if he actually did that play, the runner would be able to uh, counter it. He would be able to go, okay, barrier breaker, code gate breaker, I'm going to run you. So it wouldn't have actually, it wouldn't have worked. If the runner, if the corporation did for that play, it would have backfired. So he's like he didn't go for it, you know? Sometimes he... Well, um, but now, if the if the runner had installed both Zulu and Corroda and then hit that server, would he have had the money remaining to? Uh, yes, because to well. they're both very cheap. That's oh, three credits to play cheap. them, and then he had Easy mm -hmm. Mark and Sur Gambi. He would definitely uh, have the money. Yeah. He wouldn't have the money to run its turn, but he doesn't need to, because then his HQ and his uh, R&D would be wide open. I think one of the players actually got a sneak look at the other player's hand, potentially. <laughs> um, oh, no, but I, I don't think he, he said he didn't look. But, yeah, I think one of them accidentally gave viewing um, okay. to the other player. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that was an influence. Yeah, probably not. don't think it would change much of what the each player would do. And what did he hit? The aggressive oh, secretary. Aggressive. I really need to... Find a way to avoid this bouncy bouncy because you can, if you, a smart player can actually see the card before it appears. <laughs> before it goes oh, to the. That's true. <laughs> before it goes. Th this is only a workaround so that uh, you don't see the cards that uh, you're seeing before you see the rest of them. If you're uh, accessing like three or four cards, uh, you don't want to know the third card before you start accessing the others because you're supposed to see them serially. Uh, but when, oh, you're seeing, yep. when you're seeing one by one, it doesn't really make a difference. So quite good runs here. Unfortunately, Inner Miss has only trustable stuff. Uh, so he has now a chance to get that uh, posted bounty from his hand. Let's see if he's going to go for another. Yes, he's going to go for another run. <laughs> <laughs> Will Andrew Rowe get to live one more turn is the question. Yeah. Nope. 
So he does. <laughs> now, but what is interesting is uh, how he's going to uh, work with the uh, HQ. If he doesn't draw an ice, what I would do in his position is uh, I would advance the ice wall three times. Uh, then it makes a corroder need three credits each run. Um, so it makes sense to just go advance, advance, advance at the moment. And uh, make sure that the, co the runs into HQ are not that cheap. But nobody listens to my advice, so I doubt. I highly doubt he will actually go for it. <laughs> yeah. So now, which ice do you believe he should put in front of the remote? Um, Archer is probably what he's going to do, but I'm not sure if he's going to put it anywhere. No. Oh, brings it back. I was I was surprised he actually played the Archer. Um, Archer, oh, I don't like him drawing cards. He's not in a position to be drawing cards. And that's going to hurt him now. Especially when his R&D is right now protected with the code game. Mm -hmm. Now he cannot even raise that Hadrian's in HQ. And uh, the runner does have the uh, Sneak Torbeta, so whatever he does, it's a problem. I would... No, no, what do you do? Uh, it's a tough case. He cannot protect any of his agendas. What he can do is he can play the hedge fund and draw a card. And uh, that theoretically should allow him to uh, uh, have a, more, a hand that is not so uh, weak. No, he's decided to go for the advance. Again, too little too late. He needs to advance it three times. Now the uh, corporation, the, the runner can break with two. So the runner right now could easily do two runs with just even current funds. Yes. And potentially easy mark for a third run as well. Yes. Which it looks like he's going to start that way. He can do three runs. Remember, he gets two credits back every time he accesses. Oh, yes, of course. So now it's all about luck. Let's see. Nope. First run, not successful. This time he decided it's not worth uh, wasting so much money for HQ. And here's the sneak door, the second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now what probably Inermis wants to do is advance the ice wall once more so that it's not free to break into HQ. Uh, play the hedge fund and play the Hadrians on the archives. But uh, let's see if he's going to go for that. Alternatively, he can play the Archadrians in the R&D. As long as he doesn't draw, uh, he doesn't lose his, uh, uh, scores, uh, his uh, hostile takeovers from R&D, he's good. Yeah, I can see how it can be very tempting to play impatiently. You want that one point, but that can, that can you know, serve to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So we've got a run in HQ. This could be it. Nope, nope. Unfortunately, the luck of the draw is not with uh, Andrew today. Whereas Inermis hit like uh, three agendas in four runs, Andrew Rogue cannot hit w one agenda in five <laughs> runs. Oh, how many he done? Six. Okay, so we're going to see R&D runs very soon. And I think uh, now is the point where uh, uh, Inermis wants to start defending that HQ. Alternative, he can go for Hadrian's Melans. Now that he can res Hadrian's wall, is there not a reason to throw out posted bounty, protect it with the wall? No, and... because there's an inside job possibility. Ah, oh, right. I would go Hadrian's Melans, and then um, uh, if he inside jobs, then I can go for the uh, uh, for the agenda. Just assuming that if he's burned one, he doesn't have the other two yet. Yes. So now so he he's uh, he now he is setting the tempo for the runner. The runner, if he hadn't actually uh, uh, put that down, probably would have sneaked out. Or maybe the runner does not think there's anything in the HQ anymore because he actually didn't play the sneaked out before. Um, so let's see if he's going to try and expose. I would probably run anyway. 
When do you feel HQ? I mean, obviously Gabe is the the, the one runner who's so encouraged to make HQ runs, but um, with such a, a, a randomization element to it, um, I'm often very uh, hesitant for running HQ. Um, do you feel like HQ runs happen even at the beginning of the game? You, yes. you go for it, or is it more of a mid-game thing when the the corp is, has probably been forced to hold on to a gen? Well, think well. of it like this: at the start of a game, it's almost certain the corporation is holding at least one agenda. So mm -hmm. HQ runs until you hit that agenda are definitely productive. Not only do you get to see what's coming, but you may actually snipe some points. It's not productive. Ah, if, yeah, it's not productive if you. Uh, uh, start uh, having to get through uh, chip uh, ice, for example. Mm -hmm. So he's going to expose it to make sure that it's actually worth uh, taking the effort to break through. And, and now, is it worth the effort is uh, another question. Um, <laughs> do, do you want to keep the corp poor at the expense of your own money? It's a lose-lose situation at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. If he, he hasn't, doesn't have the uh, what he needs to get through, so his only option at the moment is to uh, still go to his plan to stop him from scoring any agendas. If he starts uh, grinding th uh, mo uh, running through his deck trying to find the stuff to get through, uh, he might not be able to recover from that. Um, it might be worth drawing like three cards, see what you draw, maybe you draw your inside job and you can take it off quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but it's probably not worth uh, discarding well, everything you have left yeah he's only really got the one the one click draw for another inside job yeah. right yeah i think that's what he's going to do he's going to uh, draw another card so he really wants to see this posted bounty since that's the uh, the danger card yes Now it costs him one per run. It's not as productive as anymore, but it's still one good look. And he doesn't see any yeah. agenda again. Poor Andrew. Poor <laughs> Andrew. Is uh, not his day. Not his day, not at all. So he too just took a credit, okay. He's probably preparing to get through that Hadrian's next turn. Oh, another so melance. Mandatory drew into a, another mining. Yeah. I would probably discard my beanstalk at the moment, and keep my uh, melance there. Back up mining. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, it's a difficult situation. You could do a theoretically also discard an agenda. It's very unlikely the runner is going to go to your archives at the moment. Uh, the thing is that if you discard your one melance. Um, then you, once the runner trusts the other, uh, you're out of uh, luck. So he did trash the melange. Mm -hmm. So let's see if he's going to go for that uh, melange. Maybe he's going to go with an easy mark and run. And the funny thing is that if um, if he loses, if Andrew loses, we're going to be left with just whale and criminals. He's going to be playing his uh, match then afterwards uh, in the uh, bronze match, but it's, uh, in the final it's going to be whale and criminals mirror match. <laughs> so I think he's going to go for that melange now. No, no, he's just going to try and uh, score the... Uh, the cards that he needs. Problem is, um, while you want to do that to make sure he doesn't get his agendas, when he, the corporation, the Wayland Corporation, gets such an economic advantage, he will be able to score any agenda. Right. Yeah, this is definitely where, obviously, playing to prevent the corp scoring the single point uh, it's, it's, it should be a very different game strategy. Mm. So but, he discards the um, Hadrian's. I'm not sure why he didn't discard the Archer. The Archer, he's going to take him a while to play, while the Hadrian's he can put in front of the other Hadrian's and make it prohibitively expensive to break through that server. Right, it's not like... Because the, the Archer is always going to require him to discard a, a, 
a point, and at that point he's won the game anyway. Yeah. Unless he priority wrecks, I suppose, but uh, at that point he's also already won the game. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, according to the tournament rules, as long as he gets his one point, he's won. So it doesn't matter yeah. if he afterwards alters that point. Um, but... Uh, so runner has slowed down here, and uh, but he is going after HQ this time. He seems to be playing a little haphazardly, like, you know, I'll hit R&D, then I'll hit HQ. That's what he needs to do, though. He needs to score these agendas before they uh, hit the play. R&D is much more an important target, in my opinion, but uh, uh, HQ is also, you know, only cost one a turn, one a run, so it's not a, a big deal to run it. So you wouldn't recommend multiple hits on HQ at this point. It's it's better to no. do at least one on R and D. Yes. Do the one for the two credits on HQ and hope to get an agenda as well. Absolutely. Ooh, there's the other agenda. <laughs> now that that's the reason why you didn't want to discard that archer. That the Hadrians. That Hadrians could be so useful at the moment. Mm hmm I would discard that agenda, to tell you the truth. I would discard one three pointer. <laughs> wow. oh. What oh. was he drawing for is uh, the other question. Ice. He's drawing for ice. And now he wants to play that agenda. Start playing those agendas, man. He's going to go agenda after agenda after agenda. Hope to score one. Does it make sense for him to put out at this point the priority wreck or, or, or maybe the project Atlas? He's going to, it makes sense to go uh, Atlas and then posted bounty. Right, so get the threes out, yeah. yeah. So this seems like a really insurmountable position for Andrew, unless I'm wrong. Um, in the you know, if he's running the remote, he's gonna spend all his money just to get through the one mm -hmm. and he won't have the funds he'll need to break through the next time. Yes, he is probably going to uh, account siphon though. He can get the funds this way, but uh, it's going mm -hmm. to take his uh, whole turn to do the account siphon because he's he will want to remove the tags. Um, mm -hmm. So he can only afford one run with it. Still, it's uh, going to swing a bit. It's going to uh, give him five credits in total, of which credits he can then use to run that server. I do think Inermis uh, should have kept that uh, extra Hadrian's world. It would have been so useful right now. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is that uh, the corporation does have a chance to actually win the game if he runs twice next turn. Yeah, if he ran the, uh, it's it's quite amazing actually. If he did run HQ twice, that would be. Uh, the problem is if he if he ran HQ twice and doesn't get it, then he will be flatlined, I believe. No, he doesn't have he, he doesn't have any. Uh, ah, he didn't clear the tags, did he? he? Yeah, well, he's got two clicks left. He could remove them now. Oh, uh, yes, the uh, question mark bug. Yeah. I thought I fixed this, but uh, it's tricky. Sometimes it just takes a while for the card to read. So, yeah, he's probably going to remove the tags, which is going to leave him with only two credits. Um, is it just too dangerous to say that, you know, Wayland's always going to be carrying three Scorched Earth? You just can't risk it? Yes, you can't risk it. Uh, you can't risk it with uh, three cards in your hand. You can risk it with four cards in your hand. Mm -hmm. He can go like, okay, I draw a card. Okay, now the best play for enemies at this moment would be advance the ice wall twice and play the agenda. And that's my professional opinion. Oh, advance Hadrian's twice. I say, oh, no, what is he drawing for? Okay, he was, he's, he's going for the one. The advance score. the ice. Advance the ice wall twice. You do not want a runner. To be able to run twice in one turn. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, he, he drew his hostile takeover. This is what he didn't want to. He wanted to top deck this. So, he's basically putting the runner in a situation now that he has to run 
uh, both cards to avoid losing. He needs to advance the ice wall. Definitely advance the ice wall. No! Oh no! What did he put down? The melons, okay. Put the mining as a, okay. a distraction, I suppose. Now, if the runner runs twice and hits those two priority requisitions, he won the game. <laughs> But he's basically forcing him now to uh, waste runs on that remote as well. He's basically telling him, okay, that can be an agenda. So it's a funny thing in this game because, you know, obviously he should be running HQ right now, but there's no way for him to know that. Exactly. But if he did run HQ four times, uh, you know, <laughs> people would call him... Uh, I mean, it's still not the smart play to do, you know, even though that would win you the game. Yes. The thing is, that's exactly the thing. You don't know it. And with his luck, he may just draw Scorch Death twice. <laughs> right. And, I, you know, I've got to say, I think there's a certain mental aspect to it. Like, when you've been running HQ and haven't seen a single agenda or game, something, uh, you know, triggers inside to say, I'm just, I'm not going to hit agendas in HQ, even though, obviously, no probability is being affected by those prior runs. Mm. <laughs> so he's going to draw a card... And another card. Okay, so he can steam hack into that server now. And then hit the other card as well. But that will allow Innermis to actually win the game, the matchup with his hostile takeover. Right. So I think it's foregone at this point then. Yep. Unless uh, he makes a run at HQ and finds the hostile takeover. It doesn't matter because then he's going to score the posted bounty. Oh, the posted bounty is already out. I see, yeah. <laughs> so now he's in a, a lose lose situation. There's no way he can get out of this. So uh, that's why I say if he had run HQ twice, he might have actually won the game, which would have been really funny. <laughs> Well, that just serves to make him more frustrated on the video playback. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the kind of thing you don't know yet. He's run uh, HQ so many times, he hasn't seen one agenda. Mm -hmm. So he must be thinking there's no agendas or there's very few agendas. Who, how can he know that there's a lot of agendas and he just uh, hasn't managed to hit any of them? Let's see if they're going to uh, want to keep it to the end. Okay, so we're going to see... Nemesis. Well, he makes a three-point showing. That's something. Yeah, <laughs> yep. So, Nev is going to go for the uh, definite victory. He can actually kill him. He can actually kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so he has his choice. <laughs> and he obviously will kill him. I mean, there's no point not to at the moment. One point is not as certain as killing him. He can actually win. It doesn't actually make a difference for the game. But, you know. It's just more fun. Is, is that the suggestion here? Yeah. <laughs> just more fun. Why just get a measly agenda point where you can wipe the runner from the face of the earth? Oh, enormous. He's slow playing this. It's now, now this is just, this is getting tasteless. <laughs> I don't know if he's thinking there's anything, he, if he's trying to think if there's anything the runner can do, but uh, uh, Android Net Runner doesn't have an interrupt, so... The only thing you know right. is what is on the table. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. That's how you win. And I'm sure he'll now splash the uh, three agendas <laughs> out from his hand. Yeah. Well, a short match there, but now we have a finalist. 
Yep, now we have our finalists. And the finalists are both Europeans, while the bronze matches are both US. <laughs> so, it does seem that uh, the Europeans are the uh, superior players in this uh, situation. Well, being torn between uh, uh, two cultures, as a, uh, a born Brit living in the U.S., okay. I, uh, okay. I can have uh, no favoritism, I suppose. Yeah. So, what is your your accent? Is it a mix of British English and American accent? It is. It is indeed. It's actually, um, uh, yeah. So, so I was born in in uh, in London, but uh, in the uh, but then I lived in the U.S. for quite a long time in the uh, rural South, actually. So. Um, you, that's where the strange uh, bastardization of the accent comes in. Hmm. Well, it's charming. It's uh, difficult to place. <laughs> so you get the, the British charm without sounding completely alien. So there's that. Right. I, uh, whatever it does for me, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, yep, you are most welcome. Thank you for uh, for having me once again. Yeah, and keep up with the videos. Um, there may be t uh, many cases where I won't be able to cast, so I may uh, tag team you and ask you to uh, jump in. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Are we? Are you still recording? Uh, yes. Oh, well, then I, I'm I'm putting a plug in uh, youtubecom <laughs> anrcasts. Uh, yeah, you can come to my channel and uh, check out my uh, odd brand of commentary there. Yep, but, do uh, that. Yeah. Everybody I should do that too. I, I, you gotta say it's fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should. Uh, it's a really good channel anyway, and uh, you your casts are always much more entertaining than my uh, th than whatever I do. So yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you.